Hello students, Miss Conley here. I am going to um, start off with your first lecture, okay, that I'm giving you, first of many, okay? So I'm going to start off by kind of showing you how this is going to go. So if you guys get bored, then you need to, you can put it on double speed or whatever on YouTube if you want. Um, if you need to put on closed captionings, you can do that. But you need to watch this video all the way through because this information is very important for you to know. Okay, but first, before you start, there's a few things. If you need to pause and go get these, go for it. This is the binder that everyone should have. You should have some kind of binder to hold stuff in. Remember, we talked about you need three tabs. You need notes, warm-ups, and other. Okay, notes is where you go ahead and that packet that you got on that first day um, where you picked up your spork tablet and your textbooks, you should have gotten a packet with a staple in it. I took the staple out, and I put the packet in here. And... And we're going to add to this. This is probably everything for the first trimester, but I'm going to add more to this um, throughout the year. Okay. And then you have a warm ups tab. That's where those wonderful, beautiful warm ups go that you've been working on. And then other, we might not use this too much yet, but when we get back in the classroom, we will. Okay. So staying organized is key. So I'm going to take this out of my binder so that you can see it a little bit better. All right, this is what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about measurement. So let me zoom in on this. You also need to get a pen or pencil and a highlighter. Now, if you don't have these things, stop, pause the video, go get them and come back because you need to be able to take really good notes during my lectures. All right, I have taken the time year after year to perfect these notes to make them um, better um, than the previous year. And... Every year, my students tell me how awesome the guided notes are, so I expect you to not lose them, to take good notes, and to, you know, use them, because they're awesome. They're really, really helpful to you. It's better than having to watch a PowerPoint and write everything down, right? Okay. So let's talk about measurement. First thing we're going to do is talk about SI units. I don't know if you guys have heard about this. SI units. System International. Now, technically, I think it means something in French. Um, I don't speak French, but the English version is System Inter International Units. And when I say we use SI units in science, it means we use these units. We don't use things like feet or miles or those other wonderful things we use. We tend to use in America. Um, these are kind of the international accepted units for science. So length is measured in meters. The abbreviation for meters is a little m. Mass is kilograms. That's kg. Volume is liters, it's capital L. Time is in seconds, we won't use, that's a little s. Te typically, that's more for physics than for chemistry. Um, temperature, um, Kelvin. We're going to talk more about Kelvin when we get to our gas units. Um, but in the meantime, if we're talking about temperature, we might, we might say degrees Celsius. <clears throat> and energy is measured in joules. Okay, and there's going to be more. There's going to be more of these when we get into pressure and other things. You're going to see that there are more units than just this, but these are your standard um, international SI units. Okay. Laboratory equipment. Now, I don't know when we're going to get into the lab. Um, you know, someday we'll return to school and someday we'll have labs again. Not sure when that'll be, but it's important for you guys to be familiar with lab equipment. So, um, here are some of the tools that we have. Okay, these are some of our lab tools. And we can break them up into two groups, measurement tools and reaction vessels. Okay, so measurement tools. These are items that are used to measure out an amount of chemicals. Okay, you only want to use them for one substance at a time. One substance at a time so that you avoid unplanned reactions. You don't want to be mixing things in these vessels because they will get contaminated. Then you have reaction vessels. These items do not measure accurately, so they're not for measuring. They're just for holding liquids or doing a reaction. Okay, so let's look at these pieces of equipment and organize them into one of these two categories. Okay, the first one here, beaker. Beaker, a beaker is a reaction vessel, so I'm gonna write it right here. A beaker is a reaction vessel. Sometimes beakers have these little lines on them, and you might think, oh, it says right here this is 100 milliliters. The lines on beakers are used more for approximations. They are not used for measurement. Never use a beaker to measure. Same with an Erlenmeyer flask. 
So we can add that one. I'm going to abbreviate Erlenmeyer flask. Erlenmeyer flasks also are used to do reactions. Okay, we don't um, measure with them. Okay, a thermometer. A thermometer me measures the temperature. So yeah, that's a measurement tool. So thermometer. And how it says here, we don't want to, we only want to use it for one substance at a time. So if you dip a thermometer in one liquid, you want to wash it off before you dip it in another liquid because then you'll contaminate your um, reaction, okay? All right, balance. That's also a measurement tool. Balance, it's kind of hard to see. Kind of got faded on the copy machine. But a balance is a um, way that we measure mass of a substance, right? Okay, test tube. Test tube. Do we measure with a test tube? Nope, we don't. Test tube is a reaction vessel. Test tube. Okay, test tubes typically do not have any lines or graduations on them. Um, so there's no way to measure. They're just for doing reactions and holding small amounts of liquids. Okay, let's skip over to the graduated cylinder. That's for measuring. There will always be lines on a graduated cylinder. This is the most common thing we use to measure liquids in a high school chemistry lab or a middle school chemistry lab. So graduated cylinder. It's a measurement tool. A burette. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of or seen a burette. Um, if you take AP chemistry, you will use it for something called titrations. And it does have lines on it. <clears throat> and you fill it up from the top. And then there's a little knob thing here that when you <clears throat> twist it, it lets liquid drip out and you twist it again and it'll stop it. And these lines will tell you how much you've added. So that's a measurement tool, okay? Now, um, um, let's skip to ruler. Let's skip to ruler first. A ruler is also a measurement tool. You guys have used meter sticks and rulers before, probably a lot in physics. Okay. Um, two things I want to point out. First, a pipette. A pipette is um, a measurement tool, but I'm going to write it kind of over here because I'm going to put accuracy varies. Oops, accuracy varies. So what that means is there are different types of pipettes. Um, the pipettes that we use in um, our labs in eighth grade chemistry, they're typically not measure, used for measuring per se. Um, they're more used for just transferring liquids but you also don't want to mix them between two different substances. So um, there are pipettes, and you'll see these if you take um, AP Biology for sure, um, that um, do measure very accurately small, tiny amounts of liquids. Um, so a pipette is more of a measurement tool. You don't do reactions with the pipette. The other one I want to talk about is a volumetric flask. A volumetric flask. Now, you might think, a volumetric flask, it has a, you know, it, says it has the word volume in it, and it has one line on it, and that line will measure just one volume, okay? Um, so I'm going to say it's used to make solutions, okay? So I use volumetric flas flasks a lot when I am prepping your labs, and um, we're just going to say it measures one volume. So although it does measure volume, it's not meant as a measuring tool, it's meant as a reaction vessel. And so let's say if I, and there's different sizes of volumetric flasks, like this one might be a 500 milliliter. So this line right here would measure 500 milliliters, and that's it. There's no other lines on it. Um, there's some that are 250 milliliters, 1000 milliliters, and so on and so forth. Um, if I know I need 500 milliliters of a, um, an acid for your lab, I might do a calculation to figure out how much of that acid I need to add and then dilute the rest with water, fill it up with water to that line, kind of swirl it around, and bam, now I have my diluted solution. Okay, so these are used for usually performing reactions and dilutions. Okay, Okay, so we have that. Let's talk about how we read a measurement. So um, you want to, these, these lines that you see, on here, on here, the lines I'm talking about, they're called graduations. So you want to record all the digits provided by the graduation, and then you want to record additional estimated, estimated digit to communicate the exact position of the edge between the graduations. So let's do this one first. And I'm gonna zoom a little 
so we can get a better, ah, too far. Okay, so, okay, so this piece of wood, I'm looking at these lines. This is zero centimeters, this is 10 centimeters. Okay, so this must mean that this counts by ones. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, etc. Now I can see that this piece of wood is definitely between the three and the four. Okay, so it's gonna be three point something. Okay, three point something. Now um, this something is gonna be estimated because I can't tell for sure. Is that 3.3, 3.4, 3.5? It's kind of difficult to tell. So I'm gonna guess and I'm gonna say it's 3.4 centimeters. Okay, <clears throat> your last digit is always estimated. Now, could I say, oh, that looks like it's about 3.54720006 no, you can't say that. That's way too many estimated digits. You can only estimate one digit, okay? Now, I want to compare this to this, okay? Now, these pieces of wood are the same. The only thing that's different is the tool that we're using to measure with it. Now, this tool is more precise than this tool because it has more graduations, okay? It has more precise um, lines, all right? So again, this would be one, two, three, four, five, etc. But now we can get a little bit more precise a measurement. We can get um, more sig figs, if you will. Do you remember when we looked, talked about significant figures last year? We're going to talk about that more next week, but this is just kind of an intro for now. So I know, again, that this is somewhere between three and four. So it's going to be three points. And then I can see that it looks like it's on the four. But then I'm going to estimate one more digit. Okay. Now, I can't really tell if that's three point. 40, 3.41, 3.42. It's really hard to tell, so I'm just going to estimate that that's 3.41 centimeters. Okay. Now, you could, just as correct, you could put 3.40, but you'd have to have the zero. Okay. You can't just put 3.4, because if you just put 3.4, then that implies that the four is estimated and that it's a less precise tool that you use to measure with. Okay, so this, so 3.40, 3.41, all of those um, would be equally accurate because your last digit is the one that is estimated. Okay, okay, um, let's flip it over. Graduated cylinder. If you're reading a liquid in a graduated cylinder and you're trying to measure it, you always want to read from the bottom of the meniscus. What is a meniscus? A meniscus is the curved surface <clears throat> of a liquid in a tube. <coughs> I know that you guys talked about this with Miss Love last year. Okay, so you want to pay close attention to the meaning of unlabeled graduations. So what that means is if we're looking here, it zooms in a whole bunch of times so we can see. This looks like it goes from 20 to 25. Um, and then this is, this must be 21, 22, 23, 24. So this must count by ones. But I want you to pay attention when they're not labeled because sometimes they count by twos, sometimes they count by fives. So you want to just look at um, look at it carefully and figure out what does it count by. So this one must count by ones because there's five of them in between 20 and 25. Okay. So if I scoot over here, if this one is 20, so this one must be 21 and this one must be 22. And it must be somewhere between the 21 and 22. So it's going to be 21 point something. Okay, and we're going to have just one estimated digit. Now, we want to read from the bottom of the meniscus. Now, it's kind of hard to see because the copy machine didn't do a great job, but the bottom of the meniscus is like right there. So I'm going to estimate that that's 21.5. That's going to be my estimation, milliliters. Okay, 21.5 milliliters. If you put 21.4 milliliters, that would be equally correct, okay? or because um, remember your last digit is estimated. So let's talk about accuracy versus precision now. Okay, accuracy means on target or um, correct. Okay, so it refers to the difference between the measurement and an accepted value, okay? Measurement and the accepted value. Errors in accuracy can either be random or systematic. Okay, so um, we're talking about we'll talk about error here in a second, but let's look at these targets. So if I 
was accurate, I would hit the bullseye. So this picture represents an accurate picture, okay? Because they hit the bullseye, they're on target. Precision, however, means it's repeatable or consistent. 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 So this, this is a really great picture because it shows this person was very consistent, right? They hit the target over and over and over again in the same spot. But was it the correct spot? Nope, it wasn't. So they were precise, but not accurate. So precise, not accurate. Okay, this person was precise and accurate. This person was neither, I would say. Okay, they weren't precise, they weren't accurate. Okay, um, inaccurate measurements um, are from systematic errors only. So let's talk about what a systematic error is. Systematic errors, or systemic, I should say. Systematic? Yeah, systematic. Sorry, I said it wrong. <clears throat> systematic errors um, are, they usually come from um, the measuring instruments. So I'm going to highlight that, the measuring instruments. Okay, so for example, let's say I'm playing darts and all the darts that I use have a, um, are bent the same way. So I'm, that's why I keep hitting the wrong spot over and over and over again. Okay, that would be a systematic error. Okay, because um, there's something wrong with the, the tools that I'm using. Or maybe I'm taking measurements with a balance. I'm trying to find the mass of something. Maybe the mass is not calibrated properly. Okay, or it could be... Um, there's something wrong with the instrument or there's something wrong with uh, the way I'm using the instrument. So maybe um, on, I'm using my balance and I keep getting these weird measurements that are um, too high every time, every time and the measurement's coming too high. Maybe that's because I have my elbow on the balance and it's weighing it down and that's why. So maybe there's not something wrong with the instrument, but the way I'm using that instrument, the same way I'm doing something is wrong about that over and over again. That would be a systematic error. Okay. The other type of error is a random error. A random error. Random. Okay. Random errors are just what they sound. They're random. They're not the same thing wrong over and over again. They can be, they're unknown. They're um, unpredictable. So maybe that example where I have my elbow on the balance, maybe that happened in just one of my trials, that would be a random error. So that would that would be a trial that I'd probably throw out. Okay. Um, maybe, um, you know, in one of your trials, you maybe heated your substance too hot and some of it splashed out of your beaker. Um, maybe there was something wrong with, maybe you are playing darts and you keep hitting on the bullseye, but then one of the darts was bent, and the other ones weren't, and you hit it over there. That would be a random error, okay? Because it's not systematic. It's not happening the same over and over again. Okay, well, that pretty much sums up everything I have to say about measurement. So put this back in your binder as page one, and while I'm thinking about it, go ahead and write your name up here in the upper right-hand corner, because um, I might have you take a picture of these notes and submit them at some point. You never know. Um, look under assignments. You guys have an assignment to do um, that uh, goes over what we just learned about measurement. And if you have any questions, as always, go ahead and send me a chat. Good luck.